Okay, so we've got 1510 going on. And we're looking at the basics of chess, aren't we? Keeping it simple. We could take this pawn. We'll show why it's a poison pawn. We'll take here. I don't want to be disadvantaged, so maybe the opponent might not go for it, but it is a poison pawn. I'm going to bring the knight here because it's protecting this square. So at this moment in time, I don't think the opponent has made it a poison pawn in this type of position. We can attack the bishop because we have the support from the queen and the knight. And we can attack the queen, but then they get the pawn back there. So we could look to just improve our position on the board. Just bring the bishop through attacking. It is still the weak pawn, even though the queen is protecting. And really, we're just looking to castle. That's one of the key things is in chess is castling or getting your king to safety by virtually castling. Which basically means just making sure your king is safe. So we could push this pawn now onto the bishop, just locking that area down. But we're also locking our own bishop out as well. So if we do take, then the queen takes. The queen is on this pawn. We then have to bring our knight up to protect the pawn or bring the queen up. So I think we can simply just take the bishop here. And they take with the pawn, so they don't actually take with the queen. So they do have a two on one with the bishop and the queen on this pawn. We do have the knight protecting. So we could push on to the queen. Now the knight is supporting. If the pawn takes, pawn takes, we're on the queen. But we're not castled at the minutes and the bishop could touch here. We do have the bishop that can protect. Or we could just go straight away and castle. If we do go straight and we castle, they do have the opportunity of pushing down. So I'm going to push onto the queen and take with the support of the knight. Let's open up space towards the king, but I don't have anything supporting the queen. Apart from this, and we probably could have done that, but it's not got the king behind the queen. So the queen's moved, so it's looking maybe to come in front. So I think probably this is time to go and castle. So we'll just go and castle. King safety. Just bearing in mind his queen is in front of our king area. So what's the next stage thing? Smaller piece attacking a higher piece can't be wrong. But I think developing pieces into the game will help. Because nothing's clear. They might be trying to take advantage of this half open file here. So the next thing you're thinking is, okay, we need to get this off the back, but we have to get it off the back with a purpose. And my, instantly my brain is like thinking, okay, we'll go here, pawn takes, and then we have the rook facing the queen. But they also have strength in terms of being able to attack here. But I'm actually going to plump for that. Because we do have the king support in this area, and the queen can quickly come and defend the area if it gets to be a bit of a problem it's just that we will be hitting a higher piece with our lesser piece if they do take so, uh, they're not taking so they don't really want to play them apples right i'm going to take the bishop off the board and i'm going to try and attack the que queen attacking this pawn here Yes, they do have that, but obviously the rook can take. So I'm actually just going to bring... But before we do that, we've got to think this pawn is unprotected. So we could bring the queen here to support that. This knight's probably looking to jump here. So do we stop that first? I think we should stop that first. I think maybe the queen, is, the rook is going to come here as well. So if we did do this, then the queen is protecting this square and it's taking itself off of the potential threat from the rook. So obviously I'm not going to cover off everything. I can't cover every defensible position. But as best possible, looking at the counter-attacking... Oh, so they've actually... 
kind of stopped it there, but the knight can come here and attack the queen. So it's got active. So he's got a two on one in that position. Knight could come here now that he's blocked this pawn, so the rook's going to have to come and defend. And then we can come round to attack the queen and then take, take, take. Okay, I think we'll attack the unprotected pawn with the idea of coming round, attacking the queen, taking if they take, still on the queen. Yeah, okay, so let's do that, follow that process for now and see how that looks. And as we've shown, um, the opponent doesn't do what we say, you know, so they may not capture, but then we can take the queen off the board or they might just move the queen and we can take the knight off the board, doubling the pawns. And they do take, so we'll grab back and this is where we sort it. So if he takes, we take the queen. If he takes here, we take the queen. If he goes back, that might be of something for us. We can come back again and attack this pawn and this pawn, but the queen's defending. So that's the idea, potentially jumping here, overworking the, the knight. Could bring the queen across now, putting a two on one onto the pawn, giving them more to think about. So then one of the rooks comes across maybe and protects. But we're opposite the king, so that looks half decently okay, doesn't it? So we're going to do that, put a two on one onto the pawn. They could ignore all of this and just activate the... Oh, well, they've gone with the knight. So this knight can come here. Can't take this pawn, but this attacking this pawn, so this pawn will probably drop. So we don't want to do wasted moves. So should we just bring the rook here now, looking to own the file? Or do we push this up just to get rid of any potential attacks that they're thinking of doing? Queen could come across here, attacking this pawn, and he simply drops. Okay, so if we did this, they dropped here. Yeah, they still can do it. Maybe we need to be thinking about stopping this knight. Or is there something different? Push. Push, push. I'm pushing here. Simply owning the file. Hmm, something's telling me he's going to get some sort of fork. Yeah, so his knight's going to come here. He's got a fork on the pawn and the pawn. So I will stick with the basics and just um, block off the attempts because I can't really see a clear way in for us. We've got things that we can attack, but they can easily defend them. Whereas this knight looks like it's going to be having a little bit of a party. So it's still going into this area somehow. So we can push on to the knight, um, elevating our pawns. It's not coming here. We can go here because of this, this support. To come here, but he gets taken big style. So I, I bet you he jumps there anyway. Right, if we go here, it'll be funky if he goes here because I don't really know where he's going after that because he gets taken here he gets taken there or is he there to support his queen coming down and attacking our queen probably so probably so so we could circumvent that by pushing the pawn up just to stop the queen from jumping in can't see any other benefits. He jumps there, he just gets hit and he has to jump around all over the place. I think 
prevention is better than cure, isn't it? Because we don't really have anything per se, even jumping here, it's still the same situation. Let's push this pawn just to whether or not they're going to do that. So we've done two pawn moves preventing the knight from doing what we thought they were going to be doing. And basically, yeah, same thing, stopping it from jumping there. But it's not stopping it, it can physically go there. It's just that a lesser piece would be able to take it off the board. Yeah, we said it's just going to be a dancing knight. Um, I don't really see what this is with the knight being over here now. I don't see too much weight to that unless, of course, he's looking to go for the rook. Get this knight out of the way or something or the other coming here. Yeah, I don't really make... Don't, doesn't make any sense to me. Because if he does move, we still have the two on one here. Stopping the rooks from jumping here. We could just continue with bringing this pawn up and just jamming that all off now. I'm going to go simple because they're feeling really happy about this. The next thing they'll be looking at is trying to open it up once the queen's moved off of the line and maybe trying to... That seems a long way off. We'll see how it goes. What's this knight doing? Is he looking to jump here? There's nothing here. So they did attack our knight and we can attack their knight. So I'm not going to overthink that one. I'll just attack their knight because I've got the support from the queen. Obviously they don't have to take because they look like they're being a bit funky with the knight. Yep, don't have to take, just jumping around with the knight. Let's hit the knight now. So go back to the old principle which we talked about. So now that he's dancing, he's got the rook. It's not improved their position though, so I'm not going to lose any sleep over that. Let's bring the queen down here. Let's take with the king. So they moved really quick there. They feel like they've got an advantage. But if you have a look at the tail on the, on the board, this is why I'm not panicked about this situation. Everything's locked down apart from this open file here. So we have a flexible knight and they have flat rooks that are just going to have to focus on an open file. And we've got a very flexible knight that can move around. So even if we're going for a trade, it looks like we are going for a trade. We're still in that situation of having a flexible knight against their flat rook. So we'll take. Queen has to come here to get that working. So let's look at flexibility versus stalwart rook, flat rook. Only place that the rook is going to sit is here. And what's the queen doing? Queen's trying something, maybe trying to come here to put a check on the king or something like that. Let's move the queen up. Should we move it to here? Yeah, let's move it to here. We know the queen's coming here for a check on the king. It's going to take the pawn, probably come here just to defend. Oh! Well, that's magic if I ever saw one. Wow, okay. <laughs> ah, dearie, dearie me. If I ever saw magic, that was it to do. Let's just bring the knight down here. So I'm still going with the fact we've got a flexible knight. I just didn't see that at all. 
so focused on the king. And yeah, I didn't see that. Yeah, nice touch, nice touch. It's a very basic manoeuvre, but it yeah, nice touch. All right, so he's defending the pawn. So he's doing basics. Now he's looking for checks on the king, getting, getting that pawn. So if we move the king up, just move the king up. He can still get the pawn anyway, if he was going to do that. So we're looking at improving the position on the board with the flexibility of the knight that we do have and our curious queen on the back. Their rook at this moment in time isn't really in the game, which I'm hoping is a benefit for us. So maybe we can start peeling some pawns off or pressuring the king area. So in my head, I'm thinking the way that they're playing, it looks like their queen is the one looking to, to be taking pieces off the board. Unless he can get a position whereby he's supporting his rook on this file. He's on a white square at the minute, so he's not going to be able to get to that position. Unless, of course, he's looking to trade, just about to say, looking to trade off. And we can take the queen with the knight. All that thinking, and we got it with the flexible knight. I'm really chuffed with that one. Nice one.